Rachel, a lot of changes in privacy, a lot of impacts um, uh, on, on so many parts of the ecosystem, IDFA, the deprecation of third-party cookies and all that's going on. Uh, I wanted to ask from your perspective how that sort of positions uh, data providers such as Comscore in terms of, uh, you know, the needs that folks will have for your services and sort of uh, some of the business cases that you'll be trying to solve. Yeah, I think it's interesting because the, the needs of the industry are not going to change. Whether it's on the targeting side or the measurement side, there's still the need for census-based measurement. I think there's still the need for accurate, reliable, effective ad targeting. Um, but what these privacy regulations are doing is uh, making it, frankly, more challenging to be able to deliver some of this at scale to provide uh, the reach that um, that advertisers are used to. And I think they're ch it's changing the different mechanisms and tools that are available and how data providers like Comscore are able to provide them. And what, what I really mean by that is if you think about census-based measurement, privacy changes like IDFA are um, really having an impact in that they're necessitating the need for methodologies that have multiple layers of redundancies in order to still be able to provide the census level service that Comscore has always provided. Now that's really hard. And that is not something that you can do on the fly. It's not something that you can wing. It's something that you need years of preparing for this eventuality to be able to do. So I actually think all of these privacy regulations will have the impact of showing Comscore, frankly, in a great light because we've been preparing for this for some time and have the methodologies that put privacy first, that understand this is really good for the consumer. This is looking at devices like the mobile device. It's so personal. Most people view their mobile device really as an extension of themselves and they literally never go anywhere without it. And they think that the personal information that gets associated with that, that's important to them. And having more consent and control over that, that's important to them. So being able to put all of these processes in place that enable that while still delivering the value for the advertisers, that's what it's all gonna be about for the next months and years. How do you see things shaping up and, and, and the way that uh, we'll be working next year in terms of I, the identity graph? I know you're doing a lot there. We hear a lot about contextual advertising, that that could be a big uh, uh, part of this. Um, how does the playing field change and what are, what, what's going to come into focus in terms of solutions? Yeah, it's funny because contextual targeting, I think, still has this stigma in people's head of being outdated or old. And it has come such a long way and is so much more advanced uh, than it used to be. And I think there's still this common uh, misconception that privacy compliance and having accurate, effective targeting are at odds with one another. And I think that premise is fundamentally flawed. If you take even contextual targeting just as one example of that, with being able to combine different data assets, things like contextual crawlers, with things like TV and OTT viewership behaviors, um, and panels, which are core now to a lot of uh, solutions and are able to provide them uh, with this truth set at scale, if you're able to combine all those, you're able essentially to offer advertisers the same value that they have through audience targeting mechanisms, but done so in a privacy compliant, cookie free, um, really privacy first contextual targeting mechanism. And those types of solutions, I think, are going to be what uh, what comes about uh, through the remainder of this year and into next year, and what the impact I think that's going to have is that it, it used to sort of be the Wild West, right, from a, a data provider standpoint, and lots of providers were fast and loose with data. And I think the result of that is going to be that now those providers that are not, that don't have robust data governance practices, that don't have 
uh, robust data, privacy processes, those are the ones who are going to lose and they're not going to be able to continue to maintain to provide those valuable services to advertisers in the current environment. And uh, Rachel, I just wanted to ask you uh, one other question. The evolution of the identity graph or the notion of identity, and I know that you guys are deeply involved with that. Uh, how is that changing and perhaps how more important it might be in the sort of the fallout or the uh, of, of IDFA and third party cookies? Where, where does the identity graph go? Yeah, the, the identity, identity solutions, I think, are core to so many of the conversations that we're all having on a day-to-day -day basis at this point. And with the changes of third-party cookies, the changes related to IDFAs, the, the impact that is having on the overall ecosystem is a few things. So to start, it makes things like panels and source of truth panels like Comscores endlessly more important because there are more privacy compliant and privacy focused um, identifiers that are still available and those are core to Comscore solutions, but being able to marry those and the different metrics and different methodologies with the source of truth panel, that's really what brings it to life and enables that level of accuracy at scale. So being able to have truth sets like that and being able to use those in conjunction with all of the different data inputs um, that we touch and we see, and so does the rest of the ecosystem, that's what's going to enable identity and identity-based solutions to evolve through this next uh, phase of privacy regulations.